What's up, guys? I'm Uncle Freedom, coming to you on a glorious and well-deserved day off. Feral. Rocking a hat from one of my new things we got coming. This is from Griffin Armament. Y'all are going to want to see what's coming up with Griffin Armament. It's pretty cool. This is the follow-up video to the Rifle Magazine video, which was pretty much just as popular this time as it was the time before. For those of you that haven't seen that video yet, I'll leave a link somewhere in this video, but also let you know that I have, in fact, been shadow banned by the man because I talk about 2A stuff. And um, I'm a freedom-loving law enforcement officer that believes everybody should have all this stuff and well they don't like that so go ahead and like subscribe tell a friend share the videos if you find them helpful and informative if you were looking to help support the channel take a look down below that description box there's going to be a link that goes to a link tree page that will take you to all of the affiliates of the channel if you were going to do it anyway and you use those links it helps the channel you get your gear it doesn't cost you any more and i think it's awesome so let's talk about those pistol magazines so again why are we talking about these things? Well, pistol magazines are a consumable item, much like the rifle magazine. If you do not have more magazines for your firearm system, this is a really ineffective club. Um, they're not good for anything, really, at that point. You have to have a way to feed them. Yeah, yeah, I know, revolver guys unite, you don't need them, but, you know, reload speed. Fact, right? One of the problems we see though with handguns that we don't necessarily see with ARs are the expense. Um, you know, here's the thing, if you're running, you know, the ubiquitous, yes, we are clear. If we're running the ubiquitous Glock, you know, a factory Glock magazine's 25 bucks. You can find them on sale for $20 or less a lot of the times. It's not that expensive to stock up a lot of Glock magazines. But if we start talking about something like a Staccato or even something like a SIG 320, these mags have easily crept past 45 to 50 dollars and in some cases upwards of 80 bucks for some staccato mags it can be outrageous to put back a stockpile of magazines which leads us to the biggest problem which are there are magazines out there that are aftermarket which gets our attention because i just said this is a 50 dollar magazine this is a 15 dollar magazine for the same platform why wouldn't you do this we're going to get there. Um, so one of the, like I said, the issue we is why wouldn't we do this? So if we look at the aftermarket brands, the big aftermarket brands that we've got. We've got Magpul. So if you've got um, a SIG or a Glock, Magpul's going to make a pistol mag for you. If you've got a Glock, a Min 2, there's a bunch of other companies. Hex Mag makes them for the Glock 19, Glock 17, Glock 45, Glock 47. Pro Mag makes a magazine for everyone. There's KCI, which is the Korean Glock clone magazines. They're built the same way, polymer shell over a steel inside. Um, and they're what comes factory with things like Bear Creek Arsenal and stuff. Uh, and then you have the clear ones, right? The ETS magazines, right? These are the great fallen star of the aftermarket magazine world. And this is one of the biggest, this is one of the cruxes of making this video and it being a separate video. So back in 2020 or even 2019, uh, ETS kind of stormed onto the market. It was pretty well known. And what we were finding was we could buy these really cool translucent magazines for our Glock 19, Glock 17s at the time. And we could buy them for really inexpensive money. We were like 12 bucks. And we get a really cool looking, I mean, that's, that's dope looking, right? And they worked awesome. But something happened a couple of years ago. I don't know what it was. It was back around 2021, the end of 2021. Maybe the great Koof got hold of their, their actual QC department and they just never rehired. Maybe they're still doing QC from home and they're like, yeah, it looks good from my house. And that's how we get the QC done on ETS. Um, I loved ETS magazines. I was a huge proponent of running them for like my Glock 19s and stuff. But these things have proven since 2021 of being one of the most unreliable things I've ever put. Like, it's like surpassing Pro Mag. And friends don't let friends buy Pro Mag. Like, they're, they're, they're bad, right? These things went from being one of the most cost effective, awesome options we had as a handgun guy to literally an exercise in futility and anger management at the range. Um, I have tried these for lots of different guns at this point. This is a SIG 321 that goes to my SIG P320. 
Uh, I have them for Glock 22. I have them for Glock 17. I have them Glock 19. I have. I even bought them for my Glock 48 and 43X. Um, those guys have seen this guy. This is my uh, 48, which is undergoing some extreme makeover for an update video. So stay tuned. That's going to be really cool. Uh, a year later, we've changed a bunch of stuff. But what I found was almost universally in the 320, I had feeding issues. I had seating issues. I had uh, trigger kind of feel issues. You moved over to the 48 and they I had to go in and sand off parts of the magazine to make them fit reliably. Um, out of the class with the ones for the 40 cal and Glock 22s, it was constant, just constant malfunctions, feeding issues, you know, all of this stuff, which is one of those things where magazines get overlooked for handguns. These are a very critical part of what we do when we shoot a firearm. And the reason they're so critical is because we are counting on this little cool box thing here to feed the ammunition up and into our firearm so that we can continue enjoying ourselves, fighting for freedom, whatever we're doing that specific day, maybe just putting holes in paper, but we're counting on this guy to do that. And these were no longer doing it. And they were doing it at such an alarming rate that I literally pulled every one of them I had from service and chucked them all into a box and they're just over in the corner. They're not even worth my time. I won't go back to them. And the damage was so bad to their reputation in my brain, I will never buy another one of these magazines. Which sucked from a guy that had like 15 of them and they ran great up until whatever happened in 2021. It's a pain. And then I mentioned another one in there, and that was the Pro Mag, right? Here's the deal with Pro Mag. Pro Mag makes a magazine for everything. Here's a Pro Mag for my CZ P07, the P10C. Uh, so this looks an awful lot like this, right? And on paper, and in like first glance, as long as you don't like actually look too closely and you're kind of half blind, they look exactly the same. But if you're not half blind and you look at it for more than about four seconds, you quickly realize that the manufacturing tolerances are not the same. You can just look at how smooth and clean this magazine is, right? And this magazine is all kinds of jacked up. That weld in the back, um, just bad bluing all the way around. There's like dents in the magazine. These things are atrocious. Even from my beloved P07, my original one, not the new version. It was a malfunction every time I ran one. The Glock ones malfunction every time you run them. The Sig ones malfunction every time you run them. Don't buy pro, if you stop buying these damn things, they'll quit making them. Die. They're not worth your time. Sometimes you find some other options in the pistol world. Like for example, if you've got one of the OG P07s, you can run CZ P10C magazines. You can run P10F magazines. You can even run some CZ75 magazines and keep that guy functioning. There are aftermarket companies such as MechGuard, which OEM a lot of different magazines that make phenomenal stuff. For example, the really nice SIG mags are made in Italy by MechGuard. They're fantastic. They're just good, right? So there are some good companies out there. Well, the big question that seems to come up a lot when we talk about pistol magazines is do I run OEM or should I only, you know, should I trust an aftermarket magazine? Should I only run OEM? Here's my answer to that. If I am going to count on my firearm to save my life and the worst day ever happens, or if I'm on duty and it's the last time this guy's going to get a speeding ticket for driving 30 over the speed limit, whatever that is, I want to know that I've got factory reliability on my side, right? Because here's the thing, when it comes to handguns, the hardest thing for them to get manufactured correctly that it works so well is the magazine itself. Lots of other things can be kind of lackluster as long as you have a good magazine that can make the firearm work. You're never going to go wrong with a factory option. That's why you will notice things like my SIG P320 X carry. This is carried with a factory SIG 17 round mag. My spare mag for all of my firearms is always a little bit higher capacity. So in this case, it would be the standard 21 round mag for the SIG. If we looked at something like my Glock right here, this is a place where I've broken my own rules. And it's because Palmetto State released these Dagger Micro Mags, which had a polymer front on them with a steel body. 
and let me run 15 round magazines in this firearm. They've proven to be really reliable. I haven't had an issue out of them and that's through thousands of rounds. So I like these and I have been running them. But my factor, my replacement mag, my spare is this guy here. This is a factory Glock 48, 43X mag with a Warren plus two base plate on here. If you remember Warren, that's because I talked about him in the video for rifle as an extension that I trust. I thoroughly trust Warren extensions. In fact, if I pick up something like this guy here, this is a Glock 17 mag with my Warren extension. On duty, I run a clone of this mag. This is all I run for work. I like the Warren's extensions. They come with an aftermarket spring, which is going to ensure that you have proper springing and reliability out of your magazines. But there is kind of a problem we run into sometimes with extensions. And this is a good example. This is a Strike Industries Plus 5 magazine extension. This is a really, really good mag extension. But where we run into that problem is say, again, clear, this is my brand new Glock 47 Gen 5 Stream our Surefire X300 Ultra and a new optic we're taking a look at right now. This is the Vector Optics Tie Frenzy X. Uh, big long name. So it's a titanium alloy 2 MOA dot. Very crisp, very fine dot on here. Direct. This is a direct cut for RMR 47 with Ameriglo uh, 429's GL429 sights. I have an SLR Magwell on here. If I take my standard worn no problem right if i take this strike industry it's because the strike industry itself the locking part of it is this black tab right here and unlike this guy where it's got just this set screw on the back this creates a tolerance issue that won't work with all magwells. It's worked with a lot of them I've had, but it will not work with my favorite magwell. So something to keep in mind, if you're gonna get extensions, you have to vet them and make sure they work with what you've got on the firearm. So when we look at these, I've talked about my 48s. Now I've told you on duty, I trust the Warren Plus 5 with a factory Glock 17 mag, and that's all I run on duty. What about concealed carry for me? Well, concealed carry, we all know I carry this one a lot. This is my Glock 45 with a Radian Ramjet. When I carry this firearm, I carry this firearm with a factory Glock 17 Gen 5 magazine loaded with my 135 grain critical duty plus P. This is what I'll run for concealment because running it for concealment, I get away from having some of that problem. Now my spare magazine, I don't actually carry a plus five. I carry a factory Glock 19 X magazine. So this is a 17 round magazine with a factory Glock plus two base plate. Ultra reliable, fantastic freaking thing. So that's what I'll run for this guy for, for my carry. So why don't I run the extension? Because it's bigger and heavier. That's the biggest reason that's a factory option and I like factory options if I'm gonna carry something for defense of my life or the lives of others. So what about the rest of the aftermarket magazine world? A Min 2 is still a no. Like, they only make them for like Glock 19s and Glock 17s, but they're still a no from me. Hex Mag is also going to be a no. I've had three Hex Mags for the Glock 19. I broke all three of them on the same range trip. They hit the ground and the base plate shattered off, and that was the end of it. Again, Pro Mag, no. Uh, KCI, good for a range mag. I would never trust them from, I would never trust my life with them. And ETS is a hard no for every magazine I've seen made since 2021 but that did leave magpul and magpul is by far the most reliable aftermarket magazine you're ever going to find for your handgun and in, in you know good luck if you've got a sig 320 or a glock they make one for you if you got another gun they don't make one for you they don't care at all right so i was much like everybody else i was always running the factory uh or the Glock 17, the G17 mags for Magpul. And they, they're ultra reliable. I mean, just ultra reliable, lightweight, bright orange follower, always locked it back on the rear, never had a problem out of it. Uh, same deal. One of my favorite ones to buy from them is the GL21. So this is a 21 round Magpul um, magazine. I get the same kind of stick out. It's the same length as my plus fives on here, but I love these for training, especially in high volume classes because I'm not going to have to reload as much. 
I think they're great. One of my other favorite carry guns of all time is my Glock 26. I adore that thing. I think it's a fantastic freaking firearm. And this is how I would typically carry it. A 10 round mag with a factory Glock plus two, giving me 12 rounds plus one in the chamber. Or if I wanted to train on the range, again, I never carried these, but I would carry the Magpul G12. So this gives me that same plus two. So I have the little extension for my pinky in my Glock 26, but it worked flawlessly. And this one's really filthy because I used it on the range a lot in training. The Magpul PMAG stuff for the Glock has become so ubiquitous and so good in reliability that if you buy things like this guy here, this is a Shadow Systems Foundation XR920. Um, this video on this is coming. Uh, I got sent this as a T&E gun and I have been shooting the crap out of it and I like it and there's some stuff we need to talk about. But it comes factory with three Magpul G17 magazines. Ultra reliable, works great with it. I mean, locks it back on the rear, no problem. It's, it's an awesome firearm. But what they actually had that was super cool that I thought was neat, because again, I'm a, I'm a 48 fan, was the CR920 Foundation Series. Foundation Series is all blacked out kind of version that's made for law enforcement and duty stuff. Uh, this is a cool, I love the way that mag, the, the, Oh, look at that. This shape on this guy just digs in. It's great optics platform and stuff. The optic for this is on the way. But they went ahead and redesigned everything. So they redesigned everything and they made a really good metal 15 round magazine that doesn't suffer from any of the issues you would see with other ones. And it's made specifically for this. Now here's the problem. The angle's different. So it won't lock into this. But that also means I can't take these and put them into this guy. So that's kind of a bummer. Uh, this little gun's fun to shoot. If you guys want to see a video on this CR920, let me know. I'll throw something together because I've got about 400 rounds on it since I've had it in the last week and I'm pretty stoked on it. So when we talk about mags, aftermarket mags, great for training. And I'm telling you right now, if we're looking at this from the SHTF world or the fact that mags are always at the whim of politicians who wish to put another notch on their freaking bedpost by stripping away another right from law abiding, honest to God, good Americans who wanted nothing more than to be left alone. That's a sore spot. But because of that, they're always on the agenda for people to remove or take away and neuter the Second Amendment for the good law-abiding people all over the country because we all know that those criminals follow those laws. That's stupidest logic on the planet. It's playing the car. It's so dumb. Like, we don't do this anywhere else. But anyway, if I'm going to stock up magazines and I can't get my hands on a ton of the original ones, for SIG, the, the AMAG, the aluminum mag from Magpul has been ultra reliable. I love these. I've got five of them. They all work fantastic. I wish they'd make one for my beloved P07 because that thing's awesome. The Magpul mags for the Glock platform have been ultra reliable. I have some original Magpul mags for my, uh, my Glock 19 that I've had for like six years right now that have in excess of 4,000 rounds through the magazines. And I've never, I've never really had a problem with reliability from the magazine. I've had issues with ammo, but I've never had a feeding problem from a Magpul magazine. That said, if we're gonna work and we're gonna build this up and you're running a Glock platform, your best option for a Glock platform, whether that's the 47 or the 45, is to buy factory Glock magazines. I know it's tempting to blow some money and get your hands on an ETS magazine because you can buy five of them right now for the cost of two Glock 48 mags. It's not freaking worth it when they don't work and you can't trust your life to them. There are better ways to practice malfunction drills than your magazine just doing it when it wants to. For Glocks, I'm always gonna recommend that we stock back factory magazines. Um, and for our range magazines, I'm always going to recommend that we have Magpul or something or more Glock magazines. So now the big question, how many magazines do you need to have or should you be striving for? Personally for me, and this is how I do mine. Personally for me, I set my magazines up in a very specific fashion. So let's take my, my Glock 19 or my Glock 45 right here, right? Because we just discovered and we just discussed the fact that I carry this gun on duty and off. So what does that mean for me? Let's say in a concealed carry, I have a 19X mag with a plus two and a factory 17 mag. 
I have three sets of these. So I have three of these, three of these that never see range time. They see the initial range time when I vet the magazines and the firearm initially. But after that, they get put away and two of the sets will sit idle and then I will have my two loaded. And every year when I replace my carry ammo, which you should be doing, I know it's expensive, but you don't want to find out your crap doesn't work anymore when you need a gunfight, replace your freaking ammo. So what will I do? I will take these guys right here and then every year when I replace my carry ammo, I will go to the next two mags in that set and then the next two after that that you're following, meaning these guys only see rotation a year for every three years that I'm running the gun. That's what I do. For work, I have I have um, nine of these with the extensions. Yes, I know that's expensive, but it's my game. I do I play the game my way. It's my gunfight, not yours, okay? For me, I have three of these at work. I have nine of these that are identical, and what I do is every year when I cycle out all my duty ammunition, I go to the next set of three. So again, I'm only running those magazines every three years in a cycle. Now, what about training? Hmm. I have five or six of these that are dedicated for training with the extension, so I get reps on that. I have tons and tons of these. One of the beauties of being in the Glock ecosphere is if you're running a Glock 26, Glock 19, Glock 17, you use all the same freaking mags, right? It, it's just, it's awesome, right? It was one of the smartest things Glock ever did. It was like, we're going to make it all the same blocky grip, and it's going to work, and Glock, you're going to buy it anyway, unofficial motto. But for me, I always have six of my, uh, my concealed carry mags, two sets of three, and then I have um, those get rotated. As far as training mags go, I want 10 training mags that I can run. I do not care if those are Magpul training mags, okay? It doesn't matter to me because they're going to be run on the range. I'm going to step on them and drop them, and they're going to get muddy and nasty. I don't care that they're Magpul magazines. They're going to keep working, which is important for me when I'm on the range. Now, here's the thing. I've run enough Magpul mags that I would trust these in a pinch with my life in a heartbeat. So you could also look at those as being a part of your stockpile. Now, what I would say to do, especially my Glock people out there, uh, to a lesser extent, my SIG people, because that's more expensive. But what I would strive for if I was you is have your dedicated mags. And then I would have five additional magazines, five to six additional magazines that aren't in rotation, that are factory and just sat back to the side for when the inevitable consume, con consumption of that resource happens so that you have new mags to put into rotation. As far as my training mags, I have 10 that go to the range all the freaking time and they get the crap beat out of them. And I have 10 additional ones off to the side, if I was going to do this again, that would get rotated in. You will notice another trend on all of mine. All of my mags are again numbered. Same thing with my rifle mags. I keep a log book where those mags are, what they're loaded with, if they're loaded, or if they're in the training rotation, and then that's what happens, right? That's number your mags, man. It's a super simple insurance policy because the last thing you want to do is be on the range and be like, huh, weird malfunction. And then you don't pay attention to that mag. There's nothing to delineate it. And then you load it back up and it causes another problem. And then God forbid it ends up in the carry rotation. And when it causes the problem the next time, we're reading about you in the newspaper because you didn't write on your crap with a paint pen. Easy insurance, do it, okay? Just just do it for me, all right? But that's me. I want six of my carry mags in rotation at all times. I want 10 training mags. I want six additional mags for my pistol. And then I want 10 off to the side. Yes, I know, it's not an AR. But I do a lot more training with a handgun than I do with an AR most of the time. And you should too, because this is harder to shoot than your rifle. And for the next person that tells me, I only use my handgun to fight my rifle. That's cool. So again, we're going to go back to something I covered in a previous video. So you're telling me that you're going to leave a scenario that you know everything about because you're in the building, fight your way to your car, get a rifle, and then re-enter a building to take on a bad dude that's got a totally different position with ground that you know nothing about because you left. That's stupid. Unless your rifle's in your backpack, you're not fighting your way to anything. This is now your primary weapon system. And this, as I've mentioned in another video, is a primary weapon system for 99% of the self-defense engagements you're gonna find yourself in. And you need to train with it as such. So have magazines, go out and train them. Again, they're always at the whim of politicians, man. We can never have enough of these. Keep an eye right now on sale. If you go on to Primary Arms, you can pick up Glock Max, Factory Glock Max, OD Green ones, Tan ones, whatever, Gen 5, 17 round Max, 20 bucks. Uh, I bought five more of these 21 rounders the other day for $13 a piece. 
Primary Arms, affiliate of the channel, right? You can find good deals. Like things like my SIG, I stocked up my SIG mags over three years. And now the Magpul makes these, I these are what I run on the range. All of my SIG mags are just, these are carry and duty mags only. These are for running at the range. So guys, hopefully this helped you out. It answered those burning questions about how I feel about aftermarket magazines. A few little rants in here every once in a while, but it wouldn't be a good freedom video if I didn't get mad just a little bit. So guys, I am Uncle Freedom. Take care of yourself, take care of each other, and until next time, I'll see you later.